Well, folks, this is our last episode. We're going to take you to the actual location where Bonnie, Clyde, and Henry Methvin murdered state troopers Edward Brian Wheeler and H.D. Murphy. The state of Texas has placed a memorial at this site, but if you visit, you will see it is a bit difficult to walk up and read. We had a great time on this tour and are happy that you could come along. But neither of us look forward to a long day in the saddle from Fort Worth to Kansas City. If you like this series, be sure to subscribe to my channel, visit my website www.ganglandwire.com and listen to the podcast. All right, folks, here we are at the of our last stops on this trip. That's uh, 214 behind us. This is Dove Road we're standing in the middle of. A lot different than the uh, country road it was when right. Bonnie and Clyde and Henry Methvin were sitting just about here. Just about in this location here, right across from what we now know is a Verizon building, which you can't hardly see through the trees and it's totally unmarked. There's an address on the front, but unless you look in Google Maps, you can see it says Verizon building. My son lives real close by and he said, I didn't know what that building was, never had known yeah. what it was. So I didn't, it must be some kind of super secret location they've got, right where they tap all of our phones. Right. Don't you think? <laughs> yeah. It's where Big Brother watches you. Where Big Brother watches you. Remember all the Patriot Act stuff where they're like tapping everybody's phone in the United States, Rumsfeld and all that. So that's where it happens, right over there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Kate, let's go across the street to the... Uh... Well, no, now we need to wait. All right, this is where Edward Brian Wheeler and H.D. Murphy made the great sacrifice to keep the public safe. And what happened, you remember that, that guy down in uh, uh, the Bonnie and Clyde Ambush Museum? I thought that was interesting what he said. These two state troopers are off where? Somewhere off over in the... Um, oh, when they were ambushed? Uh, off over in the bushes somewhere. I'm not sure where they were. Shooting, practice, target practicing. On as Easter Sunday morning, they were target practicing. And with their sergeant. So I, I'd say they were driving down the main road up here, which is now 114. They go by Dove Road. They see a car sitting up here about where this marker is, is my understanding. They don't know who it is, they just see some people sitting up here. Now that guy would say that Henry Methvin, M-E-T-H-V-I-N, who is not mentioned on this uh, marker I noticed, were sitting up here and he would allege that they were drinking whiskey and the officers pulled up to mess with them. Other people say that they just thought there might be no motorists that need assistance. Yeah. So who knows what the truth is, you know, yeah. it lies in there. Uh, the one guy said that Clyde was asleep in the back. Yeah, and this Henry Methvin is out drinking whiskey because they found he claims they found a whiskey bottle with his fingerprints right. on it, right? Yeah, that's how they knew he was there. But Bonnie and Clyde for sure were here, I would say. And, and probably Henry Methvin because they had broke him out of the penitentiary not that long ago. Right, yeah. They're sitting up there and these guys pull up to see what's going on. and. And one thing I am for sure, and all the reports that I've read agree that they died with their guns still in their holster. So these guys jumped out and just popped them. I read this before and, and the guy at the Bonnie and Clyde Museum would allege that, uh, that Clyde told this Henry Methvin and Barney just said, let's take them. And by that, they had kidnapped other people and right. taken them for a ride right. and then dumped them out. But even with like some money to yeah. get back on that that had that was not right. unknown so that's a that's a logical explanation then Henry Methvin fresh out of the prison farm the yeah. chain gang he just jumps he took up it a totally different way. he took it he said when he said let's take them he he started popping rounds at them and and killed them both right there and they took off the sergeant by this time had realized they weren't behind him and it turned around and came back and, and found his uh, his two troopers laying dead here in the road probably right about here, more than likely. And there by the motorcycle. So it's, uh, it's a sad story. You know, the, uh, the one trooper, uh, I believe Murphy, was about ready, was a, to get married the next yeah. week. And this was his first day on the job, I think, or you know, early on the job. And he was getting ready to get married, which would make sense. 
now he's got a, a good solid square john job that has income and so it's uh, depression uh, so he gets married and his wife wore her wedding dress to his funeral yeah that's about as sad yeah. as it gets ain't it yeah <laughs> it is that's about but that was a ton of people went to that funeral and uh, and really this is one of the seminal events if you will that's a pretty that's a pretty good size lawyer word uh, one of the, the events that led the state of, Te state of Texas and they had the female governor at the time Ma Ferguson and she didn't really like these Texas Rangers because they hadn't supported her husband who was a governor before her or her husband in, in uh, their running for governors for the governor's office but she was induced to rehire as a special Ranger or special deputy or special tr state officer this Frank Hamer and he brought Manny Galt in Played by Woody Harrelson in the movie and Kevin Costner played Frank Hamer brought them in To really gave them, you know, just carte blanche whatever you want You know, he went out and got a shitload of guns himself because these other other coppers these little towns They were always out gun every oh, time yeah. anytime you got a BAR uh, will gun around rural country towns you're they're outgunned so he got a bunch of guns himself and then started looking at it scientifically I, I read about Frank Hamer and he was a more thoughtful scientific not scientific maybe it's not the word but a tactical kind of a guy because he got a big map just like it's in the movie yeah. he got a big map and he plotted out the roads and, and you know Kate we noticed we saw the roads they were on yeah they were on 69 and 71 and 169 all up and down the Midwest so he started marking out where they were, and he noticed that they would go back to their relative's house every once in a while because mm -hmm. something would come up. Somebody would get hurt, a bank would get robbed or something. And, and so then he kind of saw a little bit of a pattern in that, and they had Henry Methvin by then, and that's when they, they knew that they would go back to Henry Methvin's house eventually, and they got hold of the county sheriff down there, who, uh, or the parish county, it's a parish down there. Uh, I can't remember that guy's name now. Uh, that other old boy at the museum mentions it. But they got with him, and uh, they convinced Henry Methvin's dad, Ivy Methvin, to give him up. Yeah. Set him up, and, and he did set him up. As you watch that part on the uh, Ambush Museum, you'll see that story. So, having said all that, Troopers Wheeler and Murphy were shot to death Easter Sunday, April 1st, 1934, near a site on West Dove Road by the infamous criminals Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow. Wheeler and Murphy stopped their motorcycles near Parker and Barrow's car, thinking the motorists needed assistance. When they approached, they were shot. Their efforts will stand the test of time. May God rest their souls. Erected in 1996. That's a long time after. Yeah, it is, isn't uh, it? Happened. So how many coppers uh, were killed in the line of duty that you remembered when you were on? We had, I went to the academy with a guy, Russell Mesdaw, at Traxler's Pharmacy at 59th. We were barely out of the academy, maybe a year out. Yeah. Traxler's Pharmacy at 59th in Charlotte, they got a, a hold-up alarm, and he and a guy I was riding with that day ran, blasted over there. I just left roll call at 63rd Street Station, got over there. Russell went in the front door and there was a back door, side to back side door on Charlotte. He ran in on 59th Street. The other guy went to that other door thinking that, you know, they'd probably go out that door if they were still in. And Russell ran right straight through and the pharmacist clerks are standing there, you know, pointing to the back room. And uh, he, Russell runs back in there. Well, that door was blocked by uh, storage. So the guy's standing just, you know, like get backs up right next to the door, right outside the door. Russell runs through with his gun out, and the guy jumps, takes his gun, get, goes in a struggle for his gun. And Russell, I went, like I said, I went to the academy with him, and he's, he was a pretty athletic, strong guy, but uh, this kid somehow got the gun turned around and shot and killed Russell. It was, oh God, that was, that was a hard one when you're fresh out of the academy, a guy you went to the academy yeah, with, yeah. man, that was, uh, and I knew him, I drank with him and partied with him, he was a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot. There's been a lot. Shot in the line of duty. Uh, the officer, detective from Omaha, who 
had baby leave. She had a baby. The baby had to stay in the hospital. She went back to work because she only gets so much leave. They went and served a search warrant, and she was shot and killed with her newborn baby still in the hospital. Man. There's been the, the officer, I think it may have been a detective, and KCK, he's been shot and killed. Oh, yeah, he stumbled, he's, he stumbled into those guys that just robbed the Speedway. Yep. Those are like big-time, well-prepared robbers because they've got a shitload of cash money on that Speedway. Yeah. I remember that one. Johnson County had somebody shot. Uh, I, there's been, I'd have to sit and think for a minute, but there's been a few and the time I've been on. Very sad. You know, there's almost as many killed in traffic accidents as there is in gunfire. Did you ever notice I that? About killed in traffic accidents. Very true. <laughs> you were damn near killed. I've seen yeah. the video on that one. <laughs> you wouldn't be here today if it's a simple twist of fate there, boy. That old gal T-boned the shit oh, out yeah. of you. It is. Man, so it's uh, even just being out on the streets. Everyday things that you don't. You yeah, don't. I know. Yeah, I remember old Doug, Doug Perry. I have to mention him talking about traffic accidents. He's working up traffic accident about two years out of the academy working an accident on the interstate on an off-ramp uh, not an off-ramp but a uh, connecting ramp from uh, i-70 to i-35 south and uh, the car stalled out on that connecting ramp and it's pretty narrow, narrow yeah. and, and a trucker comes flying around that corner and all of a sudden he's on him and, and his body was so bad that that it was definitely a closed casket funeral that was that was a big one too, in, at least in my life, my early career. But you know, it's funny when you're, when you're young, you think, ah, that, that's them. That'll never happen to me. You do. You know, fuck this. Sure do. <laughs> they just had bad luck. Yeah. They did something wrong. The first thing they start doing, most coppers, the first thing they'll do is, well, what did they do wrong? Yeah. They must have done something wrong so they can figure out how. Well, I would never do that. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, such a dicey thing. A friend of mine was running these guys that catch him in armed robberies and, and she was criticized heavily for this so this guy is walking away from the robbery and she comes to the back somebody else at the front he's got out the back is walking down the street and she get, comes up behind him or jumps out of her car and pulls her gun and says stop he has a gun and he holds it up like like this he holds it up like this walking and he keeps walking and keeps walking and she keeps saying, you know, drop the gun, drop the gun. And he starts walking a little faster and a little faster and all of a sudden he, he breaks and runs. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't shoot, I don't know, he's gotten like a bush or something. He yeah. got just where he got a little, and, and he got away. Oh God, the, the guys just criticized the shit out of her for that. Yeah, I, felt that. I mean, what are you going to do? That, that, that's a tough one. I don't know if I got that. Anyhow, all right, I think that's enough shooting. Policeman stories and policemen involved in, in shooting situations, getting killed. So let's head on out. Let's do it. All right. Hey, last day. Kate, are you ready? I'm ready. Can't wait. <laughs> ready as you ever be? Ready as I will ever be. <laughs> ready as I'll ever be. All right. Let's. Uh, no gravel roads. No gravel. Okay. What are the rules of going home? We're like, we're at the top of Mount Everest. Now we're heading back down. No gravel roads, no excessive speeds. <laughs> okay. <laughs>